this is your first time to the channel. My name is Scott. I am a practicing physician assistant working in endocrinology. I'm also a type 1 diabetic for over 30 years. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. There's plenty of tips, tricks, product reviews, and things like that for fellow diabetics or just somebody trying to learn more about the, the disease. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the video today. What I'm going to be going over is a once a week insulin that's in the process of going through trials right now and hopefully will be released in the next year or so. Um, something that's really exciting for people that are on multiple daily injections like myself. So what the insulin is, it would be a replacement for your daily basal or your long acting insulin. So if you're like me taking Traceba 2JO, Basic Law or Lantus once a day, this would be something that would replace that daily injection where you'd only have to take it once a week. So anytime somebody who's on multiple daily injections can take less shots, it's certainly something I'm sure you'd be all ears about like I am myself. So instead of taking 365 injections over the course of a year, you'd be down to 52. So that's significantly less and it's something that um, is really a big deal. Now this once a week insulin isn't something that's necessarily 100% new because we do have insulins that last over a day right now. So Traceba, for instance, is our longest lasting basal insulin right now and lasts 42 hours. So that was our first kind of shot at making an insulin that lasts a little bit over the day, but this is obviously significantly longer than this. So there's two companies that are making it right now. It's Eli Lilly and it's uh, Novo Nordisk. Novo Nordisk is working on the iCodec is called their week-long insulin. And then the other one is called BIF. It's basal insulin um, FC. So those are probably just code names or working names that they're, they're using in right now. But you have two different companies both making the same type of insulin, which is a once a week insulin. Um, my first thought, and I'm sure maybe you're thinking the same thing, is if you're taking one injection for an entire week, it's a significant volume of insulin. So if you're taking around 30 units a day in a course of a week, that'd be 210 units. So does that mean you'd have to take 210 units in one day to cover your you for a week. So the answer is yes and no. So you would be taking the same units, but it would be the same volume as you were taking before. So what the insulin, what they do with this insulin, and you really the only way to make this work is they make it super concentrated. The same way um, we have insulins like 2JO that comes in, it's called U300, which is three times the concentration, or Humalog U200, or even um, Humalog U500, which is five times the concentration. They're doing something similar with this insulin. They're basically taking the concentration of a basal insulin and concentrating it seven times, around seven times the volume. So while you would be taking the equivalent of 210 units in one dose, it would be the same volume as you were if you were taking around 30 units. The way you can kind of think of it is if you take a shot of vodka, it's like maybe this much alcohol, or you drink a whole glass of beer, you're getting the same amount of alcohol, but the volume is much different. So that's kind of what they do here. So you don't have to take this massive volume of insulin. Now, where they're at in the stages right now, both Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk have completed phase two trials. There's three phases when we go through making new medications. In phase two trials, they've had a few hundred participants. And what they showed, very positive results, showed that not only does this week-long insulin um, have the same effect as both they pitted against uh, Lantus and Traceba, or Degludec, um, the same effect as, just as effective with um, lowering blood sugars and keeping things stable as, the, um, as those once a day insulins did. But they actually showed a decrease in the um, severity of some of the hypoglycemic events and a decrease in general of how often people were having low blood sugars. And we've seen that with other insulins, some of the more concentrated insulins like 2JO, they do show that there is um, less hypoglycemic events or sometimes less severity of those hypoglycemic events. So not only does this once a week insulin as good as the once a day insulins in these phase two trials, they've actually shown some improvement. So that's really promising. Um, as of right now, they've both completed phase two trials. Novo Nordisk with the iCodec is actually started in phase three. They started in March. That's going to be going for about a year. I believe they're going to be done in July. Once they complete phase three, as long as everything's gone okay, there wasn't any significant problems, the next step would be submitting for FDA approval. So it's fairly close to actually being something that we're going to have out in the market. I would say 2023 um, possible to see our first uh, week-long basal or long-acting insulin, which is really great. Now, may have some concerns, as I do, because I know with my basal insulin, my long-acting insulin, I adjust. Sometimes on the weekends, I'll take a little bit less because I'm more active. And then during the week when I'm at work and I'm not really moving around as much, I'm at my desk a lot, I use a little bit more because I'm not as active. I need a little bit more of my long-acting. 
But when you take a once a week insulin, you don't have that luxury. Once you take it for that week, and if you overshot and you gave a little bit too much, you're gonna have potentially some problems because you can't just wait 24 hours and decrease the dose. It's in you for an entire week. So that is one of the concerns that people would have. And I, I think the way you'd kind of remedy that is um, when you get to the dose you need for your once a week insulin, you kind of slowly creep up to that dose, you know, you know, inching a little, a few units at a time to make sure you're at a pretty stable dose. Um, but it is true, once it's in you for that entire week, there's nothing you can do at that point. So that's one of the concerns I think I would have, and I'm sure that's something they'll address. But outside of that, I really think it's it's a positive thing for diabetics um, to be able to take less injections. Like I said, going from 365 injections of basal insulin down to 52, that's great. You know, it's less um, chance for scar tissue when you're injecting and, and other problems and just the discomfort of injecting. So I'd like to hear what you think, if you have any other suggestions or maybe things that you think is a pro or a con that I didn't come up with, um, I'd certainly like to hear your opinion. So please let me know. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, like I said, please do. I'm going to be coming out with new content all the time. And any questions or comments you have, please leave them below. And thank you so much for watching.